If I wanted to determine the measure of this angle, I could take my protractor, line it up, and measure that angle in degrees. Each little section on this protractor represents one degree. A clock is divided into 60 equal minutes. If I begin at 12 o'clock and my minute hand rotates to the three, it's traveled a quarter of an hour or 90 degrees. If my minute hand rotates to the six, it's traveled half an hour or half a circle, 180 degrees. Every five minutes, my minute hand is traveling 30 degrees, 30, 60, 90, etc. A circle is divided into 360 equal sections. We call each little section one degree. A clock is divided into 60 equal sections or 12 equal sections. Each one we call a minute or a five minute interval. Have you ever wondered why? Why do we use 60? It was the Babylonians who operated with the base 60 system, which is carried down to us today. But there is a more intuitive way of measuring angles. A radian is another unit of measure we can use. And you might have guessed, radian sounds very similar to radius. It is literally taking the radius of a circle. So imagine if you take a string or a piece of pipe cleaner and lay it along here. Take that same length and you're going to lay it on the arc of the circle. And however far you get, that there is one radian of measure. We don't use any units on radians. This is one radian of rotation. And you can see that it doesn't matter how big or how small my circle is, that angle measure is always the same. So you can see it's proportionate the radius and the arc length. The radius and the arc length. Okay, so if I can take my radius, wrap it around the arc of the circle, and that's one radian of rotation. If my radius happens to be four centimeters and I wrap that radius over the circle and get a 12 centimeter arc, how many times do we have to lay that radius on there? And you're right, it's three. If I have four radians of rotation is my angle measure and I was able to lay the radius along the arc of the circle four times to get 20 centimeters, how long might, would my radius have to be? And then if I take my radius and lay it two times on the arc of that circle, how long is that length of the arc gonna be? And we can see that three plus three is gonna give us a six centimeter arc. How do these numbers relate to each other? And I hope you can see that the length of the radius times the number of times we lay it on the arc of the circle, that is going to give us the arc subtending the angle. So however long that radius is, multiply it by the number of times that we're laying it around that circle, and that's going to give us the length of the arc that subtends that angle. So in each of these cases, we're taking the length of the radius, multiplying by how many times we wrap that angle around, and that gives us the arc length subtending that angle. So if we take a look at one complete circle, that arc length is the circumference of the circle. And we know the circumference of the circle can be represented by two pi r. So two times pi times the radius, this is the formula for circumference of a circle. So now you can see that we are multiplying each side by r. So I'm going to divide those two out. So if my arc length is the circumference of the circle because we're going one full rotation around, this angle measure can be represented by two pi. So that tells me the angle of rotation is going to be two pi radians. And we know that rotating one time around a circle is 360 degrees. So two pi radians is equal to 360 degrees of rotation. We're going to now use this relationship to see how some of these other common angles relate in radian measure. So two pi radians we know is 360 degrees. So let's fill this in here, two pi radians. And then in your calculator, we know pi is about 3.14. So if you punch in two times pi, we're going to get an approximate value of 0.68. So we're doubling pi. Now, if we know that 180 degrees is half of 360 degrees, let's take half of this, half of two pi is just pi. And we know pi is approximately 3.14. And then you're gonna ask yourself, how does 90 degrees relate to 180 degrees? Well, we're taking half of 180, so we're going to then take half of pi. And again, you can put that into your calculator to get the decimal equivalent. And then you're gonna say, how does 45 degrees relate to 90? Well, it's going to be half of that. So if we take another half of this, multiply by one half, that's going to give us pi divided by four. 
60 degrees does not really connect to 45, nor does it connect to 90. So we're going to go back to 180 here. How does 60 connect to 180? Well, we know 60 is a third of 180. So if pi radians represents 180 degrees, cut that into thirds, and 60 degrees is a third of pi. And then again, how does 30 degrees relate to 60? Well, it's half of that. So take a half of that, you can multiply by one half, and we're going to have pi by six. To begin to work with radian measure, it's going to become much more intuitive. But if you can remember 180 degrees is equal to pi radians, we can get all of those other measures based off of this benchmark. And then going along and taking a look at the approximate decimal radians, this is really close to one. So if we go up here, we can see that one radian is is approximately 60 degrees, which makes sense. This is about 60 degrees. If we know that half a circle is 180, this is about a third of that 180 degrees. Because this is a new unit of measure that we're working in, in the beginning, it helps some people to actually think about this as pieces of pi. So I'm just gonna kind of ignore the bottom of the circle for right now, and let's just imagine this is our pi. So you can see we've got two pieces of pi. This is half of my pi, so this would be two halves of the pi, or just pi. This is three halves of the pi, this is four halves of the pi, or two pi. So all the way around, is going to be 360 degrees or two pi radians. If we're gonna divide our circle into quarters, so again, think about pi, so let's just ignore the bottom for a second. So think about we're gonna break our pi into four equal pieces. This is a quarter of the pi, this is two quarters of the pi, this is three quarters of the pi, this is four quarters of the pi, which just four divided by four gives us the one pi. Five quarters of the pi, etc. all the way around, 360 degrees of rotation is going to be two pi radians. And then if we take a look at this, we know that half of 90 degrees is 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is equal to a quarter of a pi radians. If I break my pi into thirds, this is a third of a pi, two thirds of a pi, etc. I know that if this is 180 degrees here, a third of 180 degrees is 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is equal to pi divided by three radians. So using those benchmarks gives us a general idea as to how many degrees a radian measure is and vice versa. But if we want to get an actual conversion, we're going to think about that relationship. So we know that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. If we're currently in degrees and we want to move into radians, we're going to divide out the unit we're working in and multiply by the other. Pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Divide out the unit we're working in, multiply by the other, and that will convert between the two units. All right, so we begin in degrees and we're converting into radian measure. I know it's degrees because of the degree symbol. Remember radians, there's no units on radians. So I'm going to divide out the unit we're working in. We're gonna multiply by the other. So in your calculator, you're gonna type in the first part equals times it by pi, and we're gonna get about 2.1 radians. And then you're gonna see if that makes sense. So if we are wrapping the radius two and a little bit times around the arc of our circle, is that angle of rotation about 120 degrees? Just to see if your measurements are reasonable. You also wanna remember that one radian is approximately 60 degrees. So that means there are going to be about three radians in the first half of the circle, and about three more radians in the second half of the circle. 420 degrees means that we're doing more than one full rotation, so we need to be more than that six approximately radians. And then this is just shy of two full rotations, which would be 720 degrees. So again, check to see if those values are reasonable. And finally, we're gonna go from radians back to degrees. I know this 5.1 is radian measure because there's no degree symbol on it. So it's really important if you are in degrees to remember to include that unit of measure. Divide out the unit we're working in, multiply by the other. Divide out the unit we're working in, multiply by the other. Check the answer answers, are they reasonable? Radian measure is probably new to you right now, but as you move into higher level mathematics, it becomes the predominant measure you use. That's why when you clear your graphing calculator, it always defaults back to radian mode. In the beginning, if you can remember the benchmarks, so 180 degrees is pi, double that, 360 degrees is two pi, and then from there, get your 90 degrees, that will suffice in the beginning.